Is it true that tomatoes don't taste as good as they used to? And does that matter for our health? That's what horticultural researcher Professor Harry Klee of the University of Florida has been investigating. You know, there are anecdotal uh, stories going back to the 1970s of, uh, you know, in the popular press saying the tomato has just been destroyed, what happened to my tomato? Um, we've actually done uh, direct experiments where we take the modern varieties, put them into taste panels side by side with what we would call heirloom tomatoes, the, the hundred plus year old varieties, and you can see it's pretty clear they're, they're not nearly as good a taste. Why is a complicated question. Uh, there are multiple answers to that question, but in principle, uh, the breeders have not had the tools to focus on a complex trait like flavor, and so they basically have ignored it. Uh, I, I met a tomato breeder once who's not atypical who said, we breed for yield, we breed for size, we breed for color, we breed for disease resistance, and the last thing we do is we cut it open and taste it. And if it's not terrible, it's a product. Uh, so, that's so that's driven by the supermarket chains who want a reliable product? Yes. At the heart of this really is, is the changes that we as a population have uh, experienced in that uh, we want and expect to have that tomato year round. So right off, you've got a system where the tomato is being shipped a thousand miles or more. Does taste correlate with nutrition? Yes, it does. And so what we think is that uh, taste is really a symptom of a larger problem, and that is that as you breed any uh, agricultural product for more and more yield, you're forcing the plant to produce more fruit, in, in the case of the tomato, and the plant can't really keep up with it. Uh, and so what you're basically doing is you're diluting everything out. Have you been able to identify the elements that give the tomato its taste? Yes. You have this foundation of sugars and acids. Uh, and most people like a balance, a nice balance of sugar, sugar to acid, you know, the kind of sweet sour thing. Uh, and then there's a whole class of compounds that are very diverse that we call volatiles. Volatiles are just simply the things that you can smell. Uh, what I always tell people is if you want to understand flavor, flavor is taste plus smell. And so taste is basically sweet, sour, salter, salty, and bitter. You do that in your tongue. Uh, but the smell part is really the critical part. That's what gives foods the diversity. Uh, what makes a tomato a tomato and not a banana, is, it's the volatiles. And what is it about smell that gives you the taste? The chemicals that you smell, uh, well, smell through the back of your mouth when you're chewing, uh, and, and what you're getting on your tongue from your taste receptors goes to the same place in your brain and you're integrating all of those signals uh, from all of those chemicals. In the case of tomato, 30 or 40 different chemicals. Uh, your, your body is sensing people who are called super tasters, who basically have a much higher density of taste receptors on their tongues. We can actually split them out uh, in our studies and look at, do they like the same tomato? And the answer is actually, they like a somewhat different tomato. They like one that's more complex. How do you know if you're a super taster? Ah, I can test you. <laughs> uh, there's actually a compound that we use that is a bitter compound, and uh, we give you a little piece of filter paper that's embedded with the compound, and um, it's amazing. A super taster will just touch the paper to their tongue, and they'll just almost want to throw up. It's so violent, the reaction. And then non-tasters can put the thing right on their tongue and they'll say, it's paper, what are you talking about? And there's basically a gradation of people between those two extremes. So to what extent can you design, genetically modify a tomato to produce the taste? If you're talking about genetic engineering, we can do that easily, uh, but we choose not to because it's too expensive. So what can the consumer do now? I mean. There are some good tasting tomatoes around. Yes. The smaller tomatoes have more sugar uh, on, on a per gram basis. They just have more sugar than the large tomatoes. And don't refrigerate. And don't refrigerate your tomato. You will ruin the volatiles. What happens when you put the tomato in the fridge? 
So what happens is basically tomato is a tropical fruit and it gets damaged by cold. So the, the tomato is really a living organism at the time you're eating it. And, and it's constantly making these volatiles, which as the name would imply, are, are getting out of the fruit and disappearing, uh, and it's replacing them. When you refrigerate the tomato, it goes through this cold shock and it stops making those volatiles, and it really doesn't recover properly. Uh, but isn't it too late once you've bought it? It's already been refrigerated because it's come from North Queensland to Sydney or from uh, Mexico to Boston? That is absolutely true. So what's your favorite tomato? Oh, you know, I've tasted so many bad tomatoes that I cringe at the thought of eating raw tomatoes anymore. There are a few varieties, though, that we have that, that have uh, the, the really old ones. There's a classic one called Brandywine. It's very difficult to grow, uh, but it has good taste. One thing we have done that I'm very excited about is we've taken some of these 100-year-old these heirloom varieties and we've crossed them to a modern variety which has much superior agronomic performance. Is this happening in other fruits? Oh yes. Uh, the, the classic poster child of this story is strawberry, uh, where you get bigger and bigger and bigger fruits that basically uh, are, are just diluting out the flavor. If you've ever had a wild strawberry, you know, they're, they're maybe a centimeter across and they're just packed with flavor. Uh, the strawberry has just been bred to be large and firm and shippable and uh, it again, it, compared to the wild strawberries, is just, uh, it's just tragic when you compare them side by side. Mm -hmm.